behalf of the family of Linda Forrester Nicholson, welcome. I, I see family everywhere. So good to see all of you. Together we come to pay our final respects to a beautiful, wonderful lady, Linda Forrester Nicholson. We pay our final respects together to this woman. Let's remember together with gratitude her long life. Certainly thankful for her Dillingham cultural heritage. Thankful for her love of family. And especially Linda's faith, which carried her right to the end such an honor to see all of you here today. Uh, we're also online for those that could not make it. There's a number of family that could not uh, make it to the memorial service today, but the family consented to have the broadcast live and it will be on Facebook for a time. Jerry Nicholson, Linda's older brother, Nina Johnson, her niece, are especially to be thanked for putting together a beautiful bulletin. You all should have a copy. Certainly thank uh, Jerry and uh, Nina for, and, and Tina Quaintance for decorating our sanctuary of the Anchorage Moravian Church and for doing something different. I, we, ha uh, uh, we have our our computers going, you're able to observe Linda's life. And if you don't have a, a bulletin, please grab one there. Uh, we have the table centered in the sanctuary so that you can go and, and receive a bulletin or to look at the, the fantastic photos of uh, Linda's life. Throughout this memorial service today, I would like to challenge everyone to look up. Let's let our eyes be lifted up to what is eternal as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us hear the promise to the faithful. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And the words of our Lord, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. With those words, uh, please open up your hymnals and we'll all stand together and we're going to sing one of Linda's favorite songs, Sweet By and By, 778 in the blue hymnal. And by the way, Linda loved to come into this sanctuary. She worshiped here with us. She was a, a contributor in her tithes to this church. And whenever she had any needs, she would call Bishop Nicholson up for prayer. And we know during her final days, uh, she was close to her Savior, and we know where she is. So today should be a time of celebration of her life. So let us honor her. We are surrounded, the Bible says, by a cloud of witnesses. I believe my daughter, who I lost not too long ago, Ani Girl, and others that have passed on, even Linda, may be watching us today. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Not only the holy angels, but I believe our loved ones too. So let us worship again in spirit and in truth, shall we? 778, and I'm certainly happy that our cameras, maybe Moses is here, we also have Billy Olson, who is one of our chief musicians, and he'll be sharing a little bit later. 
with his guitar. Well, let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord, shall we? 778. matter what denomination 
where you come from. But I know that Linda loved Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We are one in Jesus Christ. And I trust that as we continue in our worship and as Billy shares and sings, that we will all be strengthened with might in the inner man, inner woman. And, and, you know, let's, let's, let's celebrate together. Amen. Billy? <clears throat> Before I share a song, I, I just want to thank the family that I have the honor of uh, being present here with you all and uh, remembering all the times when I, when I knew Linda, she was just a uh, great schooler. And uh, I went back to, uh, I was gone from Billingham a long time, uh, almost 12 years, and then I went back in 1961 after. Uh, living in Palmer for six years and graduated there and uh, also I uh, was a basketball player uh, all through uh, from uh, 1966 until uh, I graduated in 61 and then when I got to Dillingham uh, they already knew about my playing basketball and I got to be on, a, on a, one of the city league teams uh, right up right away, and uh, there were seven teams at that time at least. I remember, let's see, I can remember some of them, the Prop Jets and the uh, British Market, Internet Market. Uh, I think it was Peter Pan, and then Nesco, and uh, Ecos, Canary had a well, that's some of them, and then the Seventh Day Adventists had theirs, and and uh, so there was seven teams. <coughs> and uh, next thing I know, little Linda, she had, must have been uh, maybe 10, 10 years old then or so, and Snooky uh, asked if they could be cheerleaders. Uh, for my basketball team. I was the captain of the team. Well, we said yes, we went up right away, and lo and behold, they were, they were our two little cheerleaders, Linda and Snooky, and we got them uh, cheerleading outfits and those little rough things like that. <laughs> it was wonderful, it was just awesome. And another thing I noticed as I looked at all these wonderful pictures going through. It, I, it was a blessing to see that my aunt was in there along with uh, nine on nine and the family. And of course she was a very good friend of mine and there she is right there. I see her right there. Yeah. My late aunt and my dad's sister. So it brings back a lot of wonderful wonderful memories of uh, uh, Linda and then uh, Nina and then uh, Liz and Steve and Herbie and Bobby. Yeah, one time uh, we flew, I was fishing in Naknek and we had a whole weekend off and, and Bobby said, uh, Billy, you're invited to a wedding in Clark Point. Let's go. And he had a fair plane. So we hopped in his little airplane and away we went. Uh, I think it was Earl and Connie, Earl George and Connie King when we were getting married that time. So that was quite a while ago. So I had uh, many, many wonderful experiences with uh, the Nicholson family. And then Jerry, I've known him for many years. And, uh, and worked with him too in some couple of projects. And so it has been a great experience and I appreciate the family greatly to this day. Now, I want to thank the Lord that I got to be friends of the Nicholson family.
and it made me think of Linda, and she lived day by day. And, uh, and uh, so I'd like to dedicate this to the memory of Linda and, and the whole family here today, day by day. And the verse right underneath the title, and that goes very, very much uh, with uh, Linda. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Second Corinthians 12, 9. And uh, how true that is, you know, sometimes we go through this and that, and it uh, seems like uh, the whole mountain is falling down on us, you know. But God is our strength. God is our power. He brings us through all things. He loves us so much. And he loved Linda. And, and Linda loved him. And praise God. Praise God for that.
makes us think, doesn't it, about the daily struggle we go through, but we have the promise of the promised land Amen. through faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. At this time, if you look into your bulletins, it's, it's an opportunity now to hear the read of the eulogy, but please keep in mind that uh, as we reflect on my first cousin Linda's life, your relative's life, your friend's life, now all of you have known Linda in some way. She was a very special, beautiful lady in her soul. She loved Jesus, and I know we all have memories but before we give you a chance to share, I'd like to call upon uh, Tina, acquaintance, to please come, and she will be reading the eulogy. Please follow. And I'd like to thank Tina for cleaning up our church and helping to set up things so beautifully. I never met her before. She arrived all the way from the state of California. And Jerry introduced me, and Nina introduced me to Tina. She's a member of the family. I mean, we're all family. And Tina, thank you for all your wonderful help. God bless you. So like I said, my name is Tina. I'm the daughter of Christina Hansen, who is Linda's auntie, Auntie Christina. Linda Marie Forrester Nicholson, passed away November 4th, 2022, due to complications with colon cancer. Linda was born April 14th, 1952, in Fairbanks, Alaska. Linda loved, Linda was the daughter of Herbert Basil and Nina Hedna Nicholson Hansen. Linda loved life. She loved her family, stepchildren, and friends with her whole heart. Linda's greatest love and companion for 14 years was her pup, Diego. He was also not well and very old. Diego passed away at the same time by her side at, in, at her residence in Anchorage, Alaska. Linda had many jobs during her lifetime. She loved caring for and was always willing to help others. Linda began her career as a beautician and then became a patient advocate at the Alaska Native Medical Center. Later, for many years, she worked for the Rural CAP as residential mother for in-house clients who had physical and mental disabilities. Linda's last job was as a florist for Cars Safeway on Northern Lights. There, she put her artistic talent to work, enlightened by her Aunt Christina. Linda was a devout Christian. She had a great love and tremendous faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. As a hobby, Linda was an artist. She loved to paint one-of-a-kind art, such as Christian portraits of family, animals, and nature. Linda loved and wrote poetry. She would always send cards with a poem written just for the recipient of that card. Linda was preceded in death by her parents, Herb and Nina, her brothers Bobby, Herbie, and Stephen. Linda is survived by her older brother, Jerry, older sister, Elizabeth Johnson, and youngest brother, David, and his children, Juliana, Bobby, David, and John. Her niece, Nina Marie Johnson, and nephew, Stephen Johnson, and Esper Floresta. Cousins, William, Hans Nicholson, and his sisters, cousins Tina and Tammy, and many other cousins, great nieces, great nephews, great cousins throughout Alaska and the lower 48. Linda is also survived by her longtime love and friend and companion and his beautiful children, Sheena and Samantha, who loved her very much. Okay, thank you. You know, for a wonderful read. Uh, this time, uh, if there's a couple of family members that would like to come up here and share from the mic, uh, feel free. 
If not, uh, we'll certainly have members of the extended family. Sure, please feel free to come up here and share some of your positive memories surrounding Linda Nicholson. Uh, we'll all have good times with her. Certainly we'll have time afterwards for uh, hot luck so we can fellowship and share even more. But let's just take a few minutes out and so uh, feel free to share at this time. I'm uh, Teresa Derrick. I'm Linda's first cousin on the Hanson side. I love Linda with all my heart. She was like a sister to me. Linda was a God-loving person, and she was so sweet. And she let her light shine to people that she didn't know. And I know they could see God's love through her. Linda had many loves in her life. Uh, the first and foremost was God. And then, I don't know if it was Tim or Diego came first, but I know that Diego was her, one of her loves. Um, I'm very proud of Linda. Uh, she accomplished a lot. She persevered, and I believe this perseverance came from Auntie Nina, who raised all her, her children. And she taught them to love the Lord, too. I, I just pray, God, that, um, that she got to to share her love with me and my family. I just make, make God, make Linda rest in peace. She's very, very loved in our hearts. Come on up here, Jerry. One of my favorite cousins. Especially, I want to thank this guy over here. We want to hear you. He's been so wonderful in the just happened. That he was uh, in California, very worried about my sister. She had to text me, we had her, and I had a very good recall, and every time I traveled, I was texting back and forth. Coincidentally, called I mean, when I was having dinner with Tim, her sister. And I asked him to come and go and check on Linda. Linda was the one that was going. With that said, I want to share also with you I am Linda's oldest brother, and I'm happy to be 79 years old. I love life, and the only reason why I'm here today is because of God. I've got a strong demand in God. So, one thing I do want to share is that Man and Marie, I put this movie together, and I'm sitting down in the office, and Man and Marie brings me all these photographs. Linda, to me, was 40 over a year. Oh, 
photographs that you see up here is a picture of Star. Star was my dog in 1952 in Bethel. And she's sitting on the set. We used to live in the, uh, where NC Road and some of the Bethel people know what I'm talking about. There are no quants that we lived there, and Harvey Johnson lived up the, up the way there. And Star was my pet. And I've always wondered over the years why Linda was so enthralled with Diego and other dogs that she had. And when I seen that picture, I was blown away. It was just, it was just awesome to see my dog that I've been thinking about for years because he got killed by an automobile right outside the house. And I'll never forget that because I once again, after he died, I went to the Quonset, dug a first class grave for him, and had a 13 gun suit. But I'll never forget that. <laughs> so, over the years, I've always thought about that dog. Now it's, what, nine years old or so? And <laughs> I'll tell you about when I seen that picture, it was like, wow. So, that's pretty impressive. I guess one of the last things I want to share with you all, I got to know my sister very, very well in the last few years before she died. And she was a very selfless lady, <coughs> meaning that she didn't care about herself. And that's why she's where she's at right now, because she couldn't care less about herself. She was more concerned about my brother, her dog, and other people. That girl was a loving, loving lady. But to herself, she, uh, many times, this says, Linda, you gotta slow down and take care of yourself. She was not listen. In fact, the last couple months, I said, Linda, you know, if you don't take care of this, you know, I don't want you to die. And she didn't do it. So anyway, I just do want to share with you is that my sister was the most loving girl. She loved my brother, Steve, to take care of in the last two years. She wouldn't go out and take care of herself. Stephen and Dave was more important. So again, thank you all for being here. This is the first time I actually spoke publicly in a long time. <laughs> several times, many times, to pray for Steve. Steve was one of my favorite cousins there, too, before he passed. Felt bad I couldn't be there at his uh, celebration of life. But he loved his church, the Orthodox Church. And then he made sure that uh, our church prayed for Steve, so I, I believe I know where he is. He's in a good place right now. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one more, maybe... There's anyone else who would like to share? These are usually impromptu reflections. Time to just give a couple words if you'd like. If not, that's okay. We'll, we'll have a chance to go downstairs and, and uh, share. But there are a lot of pictures. Um, I was really impressed with Linda's drawing of Steve. <laughs> if you look at that photo, and this table is here for after the service, come on up here and look at those uh, paintings that Linda did. And my favorite one is Steve, who I knew. You can look at that photo of Steve in front of the um, uh, Orthodox Church, smiling. Just amazing portfolio there. I'd like to thank um, Jerry and the family for providing those. Uh, Tina, go right ahead. This is, this is one of the pictures that um, Linda sent to me, and it's a card, and um, she wrote a verse on it, and what she said to me was, butterflies are my favorite and so beautiful. She shared this card with me and said, I added another butterfly, but my ink kind of smeared. Have a blessed day from Diego and I. And then she wrote on the card, Butterfly, a symbol of resurrection, change, hope, endurance. And she wrote the verse for us. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
old one is gone and the new has come. Just to let everybody know that um, we will be bringing Auntie Linda home to Dillingham. Um, my daughters and I leave tomorrow, and uh, she'll be getting into Dillingham at 7.15. And then we'll be having a Rush the Orthodox service and then burial at the Wood River Cemetery. Next to my grandfather, my uncle Stewart, because of twelve, he had passed one year ago. Um, but she was over there for his service and everything. Lina, Josie, Bobby, you can fucking take fire engines. There's something that happened to me. And we loved her with all our heart. And we thank everybody. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Lou. I was really surprised when I asked my son, John W. Nicholson, to come up here. I know that. Jerry would be surprised. <laughs> but my oldest son, John W. Nicholson, I'd like to invite him up here to read the scripture taken from Matthew chapter 6, <laughs> verse 19 through 21. Immediately after my son, John W., is done, we'll have Pastor Bob on that. And they have please come and read from John, chapter 14, verse 1 through 7. Let us hear the word of God. Hello, family. I'm John Nicholson. Uh, been away for a while. Um, last time I seen Linda was at Steve's house. Uh, we were cheerful mood, you know how Steve and Linda was. Um, I did, we were sitting at the table, so I did a little magic trick. You know, it's not here, it's there. And so Linda, Linda was like, well, she showed me something I didn't see before. She got a piece of paper and she put it on her hand. She was like, and I was like whoa, because she made it move. I think she was using her breath or something, but that was, we were having a fun time. So I'm reading from Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth, rust, moth and rust corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6, 19-21. John, the 14th chapter, starting at verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Verse 7, if ye had known me, 
ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye now know him and have seen him. May God bless his word. Before I present a brief message, I'm wondering, uh, Jerry, is there anything that you wanted to say about the slide presentation? It's a fantastic uh, portrayal of uh, Linda Forrester Nicholson's life since she was a child and, and into her latter years. Uh, and we've been watching, and certainly it's online, and they're watching out there. But I believe that uh, my cousin Jerry spent a lot of time collating all of these images, beautiful photos captured for each one of us to enjoy and treasure. And uh, thank you, Jerry. I think I, I saw some new facets of Linda's life that I never saw before. In fact, one of my favorite pictures of Linda is with her mother, Nina, and it's portrayed up there, and I remember Aunt Nina. My father, John W. Nicholson, is the oldest of the Nicholson clan. Uh, uh, her was his younger brother, Linda's father. Uh, Elmer, who some of you know, uh, these are pioneer pilots, her and Elmer, her out of the Bristol Bay area, Elmer Nicholson flew many, many years on his own with Jim Hicks out of the Bethel area. And uh, Lawrence Nicholson, the youngest, he was uh, uh, one of my favorite uncles. I commercial fished with him. He's a uh, uh, Iwo Jima veteran during World War II. He shared that with me. And he had to be a brave man. Any of the Nicholson pilots, I mean, these were brave pioneers. But uh, the youngest, Lawrence, the youngest of my father's siblings, uh, was on Iwo Jima clearing the lanes for the Marine Division to invade Iwo Jima and to take the island from the Japanese. And a very incredible family. If you take time to sit and talk and think, and I certainly, um, in my uh, mind, I thank Jerry for beginning to document uh, the family line on Linda's side all the way back to Nyla and Hansons and down to Unalaska. And it's really an honor for me to officiate at this uh, celebration of life. I'm the oldest of my father's um, second marriage. He lost his first wife due to cancer. And uh, I'd like to thank Senator Hoffman for, I blame that man. I don't think I've ever blamed him publicly. And I'm gonna do it right now for allowing me to go into the U.S. Army as the oldest. I was in boot camp when I was 45 years old, <laughs> running with teenagers, and that senator there got me in there. And I'd like to thank you, Senator Lyman Hoffman, who just uh, won the uh, last slide election, and congratulations, you have my prayer, and certainly my experience in the military was uh, a difficult one, one with great challenges, and I found Iraq, uh, Iraqi freedom, uh, my home, it was a hell hole, but that's where God put me. Wherever God puts you, it's home, whether it be in a good place or bad places. But anyhow, a lot more could be said, but let me share this, that, that uh, Linda is gone. She's gone now. And no matter what you believe about eternity, we all know this, that today's gathering is for those of us who are living. It's for the living. Linda made it possible for us to come together. I was really proud to see my son up here behind the pulpit reading the Holy Scriptures. And, and Jerry and others of you for sharing. A blessing to see that. A blessing to know that Linda brought us together to fellowship more. Today it's also 
let me call it closure time for the loved ones and to assure that those precious memories continue. And together we can say one last goodbye. Certainly my goodbye goes down to the Orthodox Church and the family members in the uh, Bristol Bay, Dillingham area. And um, my, sis my first cousin, Sister Linda, will be buried in the Orthodox Cemetery. My father has an Orthodox cross in Manicoda. But again, we're all family, irregardless. I'm glad that Linda's going to be buried there near many of our family members and acquaintances that many of us know. We can say one last goodbye in faith believing, listen to this, in faith believing that someday we are going to be in reunion with her. Many a time in Bethel, as I held memorial services and funerals, I would tell, share from the pulpit that our loved ones have gone down to Cuscoquim in their vessel, whatever it is, and they're moving beyond the lower bend from Swanson's down the Cuscoquim, and suddenly they disappear. But we know they're still alive in the boat. Linda is still alive, waiting for us in heaven. Well, let's take a look at the good book. We have just a few minutes left here, and I would like your faith to grow. Linda had great faith in her own way. Well, let's take a look at the um, book of Ecclesiastes. And I want to be quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. It's going to be a quick read. It says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, <clears throat> a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Verse 9, what does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden of God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. That one is a good one. He has set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and to do good while they live. I know that faith comes by hearing. Certainly an issue shown in our reading here is that everything, everything in this life, including life itself, is, is temporary. The wisest man who ever lived wrote this reference that I read from. He says, for everything there is a season, 
a time to be born and a time to die. Certainly these words are relevant. Relevant and appropriate for us today, isn't it? In an instant, in one short sentence here, the author has expressed how fragile life can be. Uncle Lawrence saw that off Ayajima. My dad, he was 97 years old. He had prostate cancer. He would not let the doctors touch him. But he lived to be almost 98. He, he told me one day, oh, my acquaintances, all oh, my friends are gone now. I said, Dad, are you feeling lonely? He just looked at me. He had the eyes of faith. He was looking forward to leaving this earth. In fact, his last words to our family before he gave up his breath in Dillingham at the Kanagnak home. He told God in front of us, God, how come I can't die? And the way he said that, Jerry, made us all laugh. My dad was a ham, the oldest of the brothers. He was ready to see his family up in heaven, to see my mother, Bessie. And certainly, I know that Sister Linda is enjoying family up in heaven. Well, let's be reminded that for each of us, life is precious. It's a precious gift from God. And let's enjoy it, even though sometimes our life is brief. So today, we are here together. I know there's a shadow of sorrow and grief losing our dear cousin, our friend and re uh, our relative, Linda. You know, it was really hard standing up with the policeman outside of her house. Now others of you went down. It was hard. But let's thank God. Let's look at the positive side, the bright picture that God has given us a glorious hope, the greatest hope that the world has ever known, the promise of eternal life. And it's for the faithful, faithful Christian. Each church steeple pointing to the sky should remind you and me that life here is temporary and our real hope is in eternity. So let's be ready. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And isn't it in Romans 10, 17, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that, 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 that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Linda knew that. She was saved for eternity. Let me state this, that our lives should be measured by the relationships that we have with others. I know many of us, Nicholson's or Hansons, you know, many of us don't know each other that well, but we honor and respect one another. And I treasure the respect and honor that we hold for one another as family members, even though we haven't spent much time together. But it's really special that we can be in relationship with others. And that's why we're here together today. You, you knew Linda, you knew her family. Uh, 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 we're all related in some way. And, and I commend you for being here today. We've heard good things about Linda as we've reflected about her life and things that she has done. 
And, and, and there's something that we can learn. And I'll, I'm just about ready to close here. There's something that we can learn from Linda's life. And I thank Tina for underlining that. Tina Quaintness for sharing that butterfly that you see up here. That butterfly. Linda was a believer in the new creation that we can become in Christ. And, and we see this in Linda's painting. So really, in her own way, Linda was obedient. Servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think she's being our evangelist today to help us remember in her quiet way she showed her belief and we can also as family members acquire that belief system and believe in Jesus Christ and as we heard from um, my cousin Jerry my brother Jerry a big example of the love of God in Linda's life was how she took care of Steve. She was such, did you hear Jerry say how unselfish person Linda was? Today we live in a me, 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 my, my, my generation. Very selfish. Where the love of many will grow cold. But Linda's heart was full of love for those that were hurting around her. And especially Steve. During her time in this church, Linda uplifted our church. She called for prayer for her family. Also prayer for her last days as she battled cancer. She gave her tithe to this church. She called me up and asked how my wife who is downstairs getting the food ready, my wife Barbara. She would ask how my wife and how we were doing. So I know this, Linda, you're in heaven. And I know this, that you have served, you lovingly serve God in the only way that you know how. And we thank you. We want to remember you, Linda, as a woman of love, a woman of humility and silent faith. Sometimes though, that type of faith is the strongest. You don't need to shout from the pulpit or whatever, but her silent faith is touching each and every one of us right now. So in closing today, we do not come here to, not to mourn the loss of Linda, but to celebrate her life. I'm glad the family wanted that. And her life here on this earth is over. But her life in heaven with her beloved Savior Jesus Christ has just begun. And we rejoice because she gave us so much in her own time with us. And we praise God for her life where there is now no more pain, no more tears, and no more concerns. Now she has no more doubt and no more illness because she is now in her permanent home. Way back to that reading, there's something special about that reading from the wisest man who ever lived. And I believe it's one of completeness. It says, what do workers gain from their toil? God has made everything beautiful in his time. And he has restored, I wrote this here, he has restored in his glorious presence. So we know this, that God set eternity in her heart as he has ours. Read these words on your own. And now Linda gets to spend that eternity with God in all his glory. Well, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Sister Linda's time 
here with us has been completed. And we will see her again. And I pray that you will be comforted in the knowledge that our grief, our mourning, and our time to weep is only for a season. I had to read it here. It makes it more clear. Just for a season. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, as we think of Linda Forrester Nicholson, we know that wherever her body is, it's really not dead. She's gone around the bend. She's just asleep. And we know that sleep is not a permanent condition, and to you, God, neither is death. Through Jesus, your Son, we believe, and we say that now. I believe. And through our belief in Jesus' finished work, at the cross of Calvary, and following your teaching, teachings, we know that death is not an end, but a beginning. Through Jesus' death is not the ultimate defeat, but our ultimate deliverance. Thank you, God. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Our bulletin says we close with the Old Rugged Cross 327. 327. And please be reminded that uh, we will have a potluck after we're done here for further fellowship. I know some of you need to go. That's understandable there too. Uh, thank you for coming. On behalf of the family, I'll share that. Okay, 327. Let's all stand, shall we? 327, and we'll sing the first answer, third and four. Well, three and four.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Everyone says, God bless you. If you'd like to get another beautiful bulletin, there's more there. If you'd like to see the paintings of Linda, feel free to go around the table there in the center of the sanctuary. And feel free to fellowship up here if you'd like. There's food downstairs, coffee, tea, and I'm sure some juice. Um, feel free to fellowship. God bless you all.